Hi, I'm Andy with EcoChan. Here we are with batch number 13 of the EcoCha Tea Club. And I'm going to get right into it and start brewing as I introduce this batch of tea. It is a winter crop uh, from our source of Dongding Oolong from Yonglong Village in Lugu Township, Nanto County, Taiwan. Uh, and this plot of tea was affected by the green leaf hopper, which is responsible for the making of Oriental Beauty and now uh, a more recent incarnation of Oriental Beauty known as concubine tea. This green leaf hopper uh, comes at a time when the leaf is just budding, a uh, very small uh, immature growth just coming out of the old leaf stem and uh, likes to feed on the sap of the new leaf growth. And the effect of this bug is that it causes uh, a reaction within the tea plant that in the end, after the tea is harvested and processed, results in a honey fragrance, uh, a honey character in the tea that is quite distinct and uh, just gives the tea uh, a flavor profile and a character of its own. It's usually quite distinct. Although there is a gradation of effect uh, from the green leaf hopper, in other words, the leaves can be harvested and cured and there's just barely a noticeable honey fragrance or at other times uh, the leaves produce a very strong and evident honey character which is indicative of the green leaf hoppers effect. This harvest, the, the green leaf hopper was present right up to uh, several days before the harvest so the effect uh, in the processed leaves is still quite evident. It ap apparently it's a matter of uh, harvesting the leaves before it rains, after the bugs have affected the leaves. So the bugs go and do their thing, and then if they're harvested before the next rain, the, that flavor that the effect of the green leaf hopper has is the most evident or prevalent. The way they processed it is uh, in a very traditional manner. They let it oxidize quite a bit. I'd say maybe... Mm, if a Dongding Oolong is oxidized 30 to 40 percent, I'd say this is right around 50 percent oxidation. It's significantly more than a standard Dongding, not as much as an Oriental Beauty, but not too far away. And then they only roasted it enough to really cure the leaves and not have a, a significantly roasted effect. So it's not the roasting. Uh, It's just amazing. It's like, it's like fruit and roses <laughs> and this, this sweet character, but it's, it's not even sweet. It's just that essence of, of that flowery sense that you get from a fresh wild honey. It really has that honey aroma. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm kind of uh, mystified by it every time I experience it, that this, this small, tiny flying insects come and, uh, and do their magic on these leaves and we get to appreciate it by knowing uh, through traditional tea making wisdom that this is possible um, and farmers knowing how to, to respond to the condition of the leaves in order to, to bring out that flavor and to maintain it. So this farmer left it more as a, a, an even more traditionally made tea known as Hong Shui Oolong which is uh, heavily oxidized but very lightly roasted, if at all. Uh, so it is similar to a Hong Shui, but the flavor profile is definitely in, on its own. It's, it's the, the, the Hong Shui would never have this, this honey aspect if it weren't for the green leaf hopper. And for whatever reason, the green leaf hopper picked that field of tea to feed on. And uh, one of the more obvious reasons is that our farmer friend didn't uh, administer pesticides. Because it was winter season, they, they, they only do it, they're very careful and they actually don't follow any SOP. They, they follow the condition of the tea plants and the weather to, to determine whether they need to use farm agricultural products at all. So beyond the aroma, which is, I find very distinct, very obvious, very evident, uh, it's amazing that this is a naturally produced 
tea flavor and not some added kind of fruit or flower essence. On the palate, it's, it's got that Hong Shui character. It's very uh, mellow, heavily oxidized character. Um, fruity, complex, but smooth with a clean astringency that is characteristic of oolong tea. On the palate, there's just a lot going on. It's quite complex. One of the uh, innate characteristics of a bug bitten crop of tea that it is quite possible, and in my experience does happen, that every pot of tea can be slightly different because you just never know what the concentration of those bug bitten leaves is going to be in a given scoop of tea, no less a given batch. So uh, don't be surprised when you sit down and brew this tea several times and it comes out slightly differently. If, if that indeed is the case. Because the, each leaf is literally in its own category in terms of the effect of the green leaf hopper, the concentration of those compounds that give it the honey essence character. I also feel that this uh, is quite appropriate for our upcoming holiday season. Um, there's a fruity, kind of underlying what what your taste buds tell you is sweet but it's not sweet it's just something yummy and and aromatic and complex in its fruity character but it's actually quite dry you know you do get the the underlying astringency and and touch of bitter uh, in the finish which reminds you that you are drinking real tea uh, which the the that clean finish I think is, is quite appropriate for our typically uh, overdone meal times during the holidays. So if uh, you're feeling a little over full at any point through the holidays, you might want to pull this out and brew a pot of tea after your delicious holiday meals. We think you're really going to enjoy it. We wish you a happy and peaceful holiday season. Stay warm, stay healthy, and keep drinking delicious rare batches of tea that we can find and share with you. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next month.